I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about a flat UI theme, sidebar menus, icon stacks, and more. Let's check it out. So you may remember a few episodes ago where we talked about flat UI. We had quite a lively discussion here on the show. We did. It was, it was wonderful. I, uh, I wrote about it in my diary. Uh, but anyway, first up, we have a flat UI theme for jQuery Mobile. Now, there's a, a really, really nice demo here. Um, basically, any of the UI elements that you would expect to be in there are right here on jQuery Mobile. You've got the uh, main header navigation menu. All the buttons are formatted and uh, different sections. You know, collapsible content and even icons are included. Not too much to say about this, but a great project. And if you already have a jQuery Mobile style website and want to integrate flat UI, go ahead, check it out. Um, the link for that is going to be on GitHub, and you can find it in the show notes. Very cool stuff. Well, speaking of mobile, next up is a tool that allows you to put sidebars into your website. Of course, sidebars are becoming a very popular design pattern on mobile. Right. And now you can do it on your web page as well. So let's take a look at Cider, which is, according to the website, the best jQuery plugin for creating side menus and the easiest way for doing your menu responsive. Now, so, when you say cider, you mean this plugin and not the apple flavored drink, right? That that is that is correct. Okay, just yep. wanted to make sure. Yep. Thanks for clarifying, Jason. No problem. Uh, so simple use case. You can go ahead and open up a menu on the side of your web page, and it'll go ahead and slide open, just like that. And you can click on different stuff there. We'll go ahead and scroll down to other examples here. You can, of course, have a left menu, which is demonst demonstrated here, or you can pop out a menu on the right side as well. You can also you know, load in content uh, remotely, do callbacks, Ajax, etc., all the things you would expect. And you can also do responsive menus. It's saying I actually need to resize the browser to show that, but you get the idea. Pretty cool, and you know this type of sidebar would be very difficult to actually implement on your own with all the nice sliding animation. So I highly recommend that you go ahead and just use this plugin instead. I I definitely agree with you on that. I guess you could say I'm on your side. Er, I see what you did there. Next up, we have a project called Lungo. This is a cross-platform HTML5 prototyping framework. Now, this is going to help you make HTML5 uh, applications that work uh, across devices. So it'll work on you know, a full-size web browser, on different mobile browsers as well. There's a little demo that you can see right here, scrolling right inside of this uh, illustration of a phone. Have different UI elements that you expect to find in any sort of framework here, header, uh, more sidebar menus are integrated. There's a ton of stuff that you can do here. This is going to be something that you are mainly using for prototyping applications. Now, I'm sure you could actually roll something out to production with it, but you can save yourself a lot of work by just going through using this to prototype your mobile apps, get an idea of how they look before you go through, start implementing absolutely everything yourself. Uh, anyway, check that out. It's called Lungo. Bam. Sounds like a lot of time saved there. It does. Next up is this really cool blog post called Icon Stacks. And if we take a look at the post, you can scroll down here. And you see all of these various icons for different weather conditions. So we have snow, rain, thunderstorms, uh, partly cloudy, and uh, this little moon here. I guess that's for, for nighttime. That takes up uh, pretty much all the weather patterns we see here in Florida. Pretty much. It's almost always cloudy. But uh, the cool thing about this is that you are actually seeing the same cloud here over and over again. So this isn't a separate set of icons. This is just the same cloud that's being scaled and repeated across all of these different icons. So what's going on here? Well, the icons are using SVG to go ahead and illustrate first the uh, the actual weather condition, and then they're laying the cloud on top of that. Now, this is nice because not only 
can you go ahead and use scalable vector graphics to you know, be resolution independent and create an icon at all different sizes for the same, you know, same file size, but you can also actually reuse those icons and create new permutations by just combining different pieces of iconography. So, so very cool, pretty advanced technique, um, but uh, you know, definitely worth checking out. Might save a little bit of a uh, little bit of bandwidth there. Yeah, cool. Also, because you can style them independently with the gradients, like he does in the post. Yes. Another thing I really like about this project is it's called Icon Stacks, which is just one letter away from being Eye Contact. Very close to it, Jason. Next, next up, we have a project called Select Two. Now, this is not brand new, but a uh, new version Be of it was because obviously you must have had Select One right prior to Select. Because one comes before two. I'm going to trust your math. I, I don't have time to verify it. Hmm. Anyway, version 3.3.2 has been released. There's some new stuff in here. Um, select 2 is a jQuery replacement for select boxes. Yes, I did read that right off the page there. But it's actually really cool with what it can do. So you've got this regular select box right here. Pfft, whatever. How about this enhanced one with select 2? Wow, look at that. Psh, Not amazing. Only, isn't it? Not only is it a regular drop down there, you can, you can filter by just typing things in. Look, I typed the letter F there, Florida. Boom, it's in there. Uh, you don't have to use uh, just a single select. There's a ton of different examples. And it uses jQuery and you know, the usual jQuery syntax. It's highly extensible, supports a lot of different options. Uh, we'll have a link for that in the show notes as well. So Nick, uh, I got a surprise for you. What's that? Ryan Carson, CEO of Treehouse was in uh, in Orlando the other week, and I got a chance to interview him. Let's check it out. I'm sorry I'm late. I was, uh, my laptop here with the uh, okay interview questions. So, what kind of questions have you prepared? Uh, yeah, yeah, they're right here. Online education. Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's talk business. Business. Financial statements. Leverage buyouts. Contracts. EBITDA. Hostile takeovers. Cash flow forecasts. Net gains. Nope. Net gains and losses. Corporate credit card. Earnings before, interest, taxation, dividends, and amortization. You win. Strictly business. All right, well, thank you so much. I think this has been one of the best uh, interviews we've ever had here on Strictly Business, and it's time for the award ceremony. All right, go. Go ahead and present me the award. What? All right, smile for the camera. Handshake. What? Did you prepare a speech? What? No. Wow, Jason, thanks for another hard-hitting interview. No problem. Looks like you might have uh, crashed your scooter there. Uh, not my scooter, and yes, I do my own stunts. All right. Next up is this really cool pen we found on CodePen, which is a website where you can go ahead and share HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and it will actually give you a live preview in the browser. Pretty cool stuff. This particular pen 
shows a cloth simulation in JavaScript. So if I go ahead and grab onto this cloth here, it will actually move around. Wow. And you can actually right click and tear this cloth. Ooh. Oh, looks like I didn't quite right click. There, there it goes. And it will actually get torn away there. Pretty impressive stuff. There's a very minimal amount of HTML and CSS. Most of what's going on here is happening in JavaScript. Now, there's a number of variables here that are the settings for this cloth. You can go ahead and adjust them. So, for example, you can adjust the physics accuracy. So, if I were to increase this by, say, two orders of magnitude, it would go ahead and reset the cloth here. And now, when I try to tear across it, it's actually going to run a lot slower because it's doing much more accurate physics calculations. But uh, pretty amazing stuff. And really, uh, all that we're trying to show here is that there's just an amazing amount of stuff that you can do in JavaScript and in the browser. And the possibilities are pretty, pretty impressive. I, I think it's really interesting how you can uh, you know, reduce the accuracy like you showed um, with the physics. That would be really handy if you're running into a device with less processing power. Maybe do some detection in JavaScript to see how many frames per second you're getting. That's pretty smart. Also, the demo is called Terrible Cloth, which kind of sounds like terrible cloth. Hmm. But it's actually pretty awesome. Not terrible, but it is terrible. Next up, we have a project called Pickadate.js. Uh, we've talked about Twitter Bootstrap here on the show before. Wonderful CSS framework. Pickadate.js is a mobile calendar date selector plugin for jQuery and Twitter Bootstrap. And it's extremely easy to use. Here's a text box right here. Click inside there, and whoa, this calendar comes up, and you can pick a date. And uh, that's it. There's a few different themes that you can use. Um, default theme, which you just saw. Uh, the classic theme isn't isn't that nice. Uh, and yeah, just a, a bunch of different options. You can have it display right in line on the page right there. Works in IE7 and up. And uh, yeah, really nice, responsive, mobile friendly. Boom. That's pretty impressive. Next up is chartin.js. And this is basically a piece of JavaScript that allows you to overlay instructions onto an interface or your website and basically show people how to use it. So let's go ahead and see it in action here. If I go ahead and click this button, a painting pops up and then it overlays this sort of dark, uh, dark tint onto the website and then there's labels that point out what everything does. And this, again, would be really handy if you're trying to demonstrate uh, what all the functionality in an interface does and inside of your application. And I think this is actually a little bit better than giving a tour in an app where you have to like step through each each thing in the tour yeah. and uh, you know go page by page. It's it's much better because you can just click a button if you need help and it will just label everything in the interface. I I find that to be much better. I hate having to go through tours when I you know start up a new New web app, and uh, you know, have to just click through them before I can actually get to the app. Yeah, it'd be probably pretty good for blank slates as well. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, you could probably. I'm sure there's a setting in here where you can have this pop up automatically, but I I like it much better where you can just hit a button if you need the help if you don't know what a certain piece of the interface does. So. Right. If you're an expert, you don't want that. No. No. Yeah. Just let me use the application. <laughs> expert. Done. Done. But very cool stuff. That is it for this week's episode. On Twitter, I am at NickRP. And I am at JCypher. For show notes and more, you can check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash gotreehouse. And we are also in iTunes. Just search for The Treehouse Show. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about web design, web development, mobile, business, and so much more, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. If you'd like to see more advanced videos and tutorials like this one, go to teamtreehouse.com and start learning for free.